They say that necessity is the mother of invention. I grew up in Lebanon during a time of war and conflict, scarcity and inequality, during a time when lives were destroyed, babies decapitated, children orphaned, wives widowed, and Lebanese of all age and gender crippled by the most horrific and indescribable injuries that still scar my memory to this day. I saw firsthand how access to safe and affordable health care was not a privilege everyone enjoyed. At times, it made me feel really helpless and at times empowered. This was the root of my inspiration. I believe so strongly that if we look to areas of the world where healthcare is needed most, to those areas where even access to the basics is a major challenge, that it is there that we can find solutions relevant to us all. For it is in these places that we find the courage to embrace the unknown and to take steps that help us move forward. I always knew I wanted to be a surgeon, a reconstructive surgeon, because I really wanted to make a difference in patients' lives. I wanted to restore their form and function. At a young age, I learned about some of the inspirational work some charities were doing in transforming patients' lives, blighted by physical deformity, caused by poverty, by disease, by violence, in areas of the world where access to reconstructive surgery was virtually non-existent. This was something I wanted to be a part of. I'd like to introduce you to Ali. Ali was a 21-year-old young man in the heart of Gaza, the eldest of a big family, and the sole breadwinner, working extremely hard every day to make sure there was enough food on the table for his family, for his brothers and sisters. And despite this heavy responsibility on such young shoulders, Ali was a happy, optimistic young man with big dreams. He wanted to be a nurse. He wanted to secure a stable job. But more importantly, he wanted to give back to his, to his community, a community that suffered and endured for so long. Suddenly, Ali's life was flipped upside down. Like so many people he knew, he too fell victim to the violence that plagues life in Gaza on a daily basis. He was at the wrong place, at the wrong time, and got caught in a bomb blast injury. His hand was mutilated, his dreams crushed, and his ambitions of becoming a nurse snuffed out in a matter of seconds. Hampered by his ability to work, his future looked extremely bleak. Dr. Hafiz, a local surgeon, heard about Ali's case and was moved by his plight. He was determined to do whatever it took to help him. But he had one big problem. He needed access to expertise which was not available in Gaza. The answer came to him when he heard about a new cutting-edge technology that would allow him to access expertise from outside of Gaza to help him. Using an augmented reality collaborative software, a surgeon outside of Gaza was able to virtually transport himself into Dr. Hafiz's operating room simply by using his iPad. <coughs> Through the software, he was able to visually and practically engage in the operation, to virtually scrub in, and by mentoring and proctoring him step by step using illustrations and diagrams, together they were able to reconstruct Ali's hand, as if he was standing right there in the operating room with them. Now Ali had a chance, a chance at a positive life, a meaningful life, a life he wanted to live. This technology transformed his life and his family's life. They now had hope. He was now able to work again, and he was now able to pursue his dreams of becoming a nurse. I've always been struck by the strange imbalance between access to, health, to surgical services and need. Parts of the world struck by war, famine, poverty, and extreme deprivation, and those areas where we know that surgical services can make the biggest difference are the areas with the greatest scarcity. <coughs> This was the inspiration that led me to create and design the software. The germ of this idea came from a need and a necessity. I asked myself, how can we address this, this imbalance between supply and demand? In a world where billions of people carry around a device every day, 
that allows them to talk to anyone no matter where they are on the planet. Surely we didn't have to rely solely on having a surgeon physically present in an operating room. Technology was removing barriers to space and time. All we had to do was to apply that technology in the right ways. We face a scarcity of surgical resources in our NHS too, the NHS that we love and work in. With increasing budgetary constraints and an ever-increasing constraint and demand to be faster, quicker, sharper, leaner, rationing is becoming an everyday reality. In surgery, this translates into specialist services such as oncology and heart disease, centralizing into fewer and fewer priority settings. And whilst this improves control of resources, it reduces access at a local level. I'm determined that things don't need to be this way. Imagine that specialists, instead of being isolated into certain locations, could share their expertise freely without ever having to leave where they are. Imagine what this would do to waiting times and how much money could be saved. And imagine how this free flow of knowledge could breathe life back into surgical training where students and trainees could sit in on a wider range of procedures without ever having to leave their locations. And that they could be inspired by world-renowned experts no matter where they were in the world. <coughs> and imagine how these expert skills, rather than shrinking into isolated pockets, could blossom and spread around the country and around the world. This is not science fiction. This is something I have made possible through passion and perseverance. These ideas were born out of a challenge of necessity. And by embracing that challenge, we are able to tackle much wider issues in healthcare. If I ask one thing of you tonight, it is to open your minds. Open to your mind to the possibility that we can be friends with technology. It has allowed me to achieve what I always set out to do, to make a difference in people's lives and to my profession. For me and for others, technology was and is a step into the unknown. But by embracing that challenge, and when necessity forces us to, we can achieve some really amazing things. Thank you.